Hello my friends, welcome back to the PC Elitist. My name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard. And today we're having a discussion about... Well, I guess it came about from the Thief discussion video I did. The alone. solo video. The solo video. Yes, that was uncharted territory. You unfriended me from Facebook for that one. Apparently. No. <laughs> I don't, do you have a Facebook? No. Well, not even going to go there. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, remember our last video, we apologize that it's been a little while. It's been a while. We won't go into explaining why. And by explaining, I mean Woodsy offering up pathetic excuses. <laughs> but we won't go into explaining why, but we appreciate your patience with My us. My hard drive died, and I moved. And I was out of town for a while. Yeah. yeah. And that equals no PC latest videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was a perfect storm of terrible, terrible things. Right. So this is Woodsy, mainly, wanting to react and respond to the comments, the feedback he got from the Thief 4 Impressions uh, discussion that he did with himself. It's right. not really a discussion, more of a monologue. No, it was a monologue. Monologue. Of, of great ideas. And you all nearly picketed in the streets, so he wanted to tell you how stupid you are. Well, no, not really. The, everyone brought up some, the people who commented That's brought up good off points. That's microphone, so I'm just trying to be <laughs> honest with our listeners. You jerk! Um, what we want to talk about today is more of a definition, because sometimes we use terms like sim, arcade, immersion... And even though I have parameters of what that means in my head, that doesn't equal that everyone else thinks of it the same way. Basically, whatever your dictionary definition is of it, he's about to tell you that the entire world should work on his definition. Right. Right. So he's trying to redefine What do you, do you parts think of the we're English doing language. here with this challenge, channel, if not that? <laughs> I'm on a mission to civilize. Okay. Well... Well, well, we'll have a group discussion. We'll t give our thoughts on immersion, on how to define immersion, and then people will comment and say, you're wrong. And that's fine, because mm -hmm. that's what this is all about. It's about the discussion. Um, so, immersion. I've noticed that people convolute it with... What's the word you used? When a you're... Immersion? No, not, not that one. We're not getting there yet. <laughs> okay. Okay, to just being... Oh, being fixated. Being focused fixated, on what you're doing. Yeah, being fixated in a project or game, or you're just, it, you know, it's taking up all of your attention. Yeah, you being so fixated on your iPhone screen playing Angry Birds that you walk into a pole. Yeah. That's not, you're not immersed in Angry Birds. Right. You're and fixated. you said it the best with Doodle Jump, because it, you said... I might be really invested in what I'm doing on Doodle Jump, but I don't think I'm actually jumping on pads. From platform to platform. I don't feel like I'm actually doing that. Correct. And that's really a great example of what we're talking about. When I use the word immersion, I mean that you've kind of mentally done that transcendence where you're, I feel like I'm doing what I'm doing on screen, and the rest of reality is kind of gone by the wayside. Mm-hmm. And that's what I generally try to reach with video games. I love getting to that point. Um, now, there's a few ways to get there, and you could do that on the spectrum of arcade and sim, but we're not going to touch on those at the moment. We just want to define this, but then we're going to talk about defining sim and defining arcade and work on those all separately. But, so, there's a few uh, examples people brought up as immersive games. And someone said, I believe, like Dota, StarCraft. And you brought up the point that, because I was saying, I don't think those are immersive experiences. I don't think they're trying to make you feel like you're on the battlefield or you are that character. They're a, they're a, a competitive game, like a poker game or, or, chess. or chess. And that you're not supposed to feel like you're in it. You're supposed to feel above it. Feel, yeah, mm -hmm. quite literally in an RTS. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I think that... And it, well, first what I'll say, because I think it's necessary before I get to what I was just going to say. To me, immersion is not so much, is a game immersive, yes or no? I think, yes, you can answer that question, yes or no. To me, it's to what degree is it? Mm -hmm. And the subjectivity in there for me comes in. Let's say, for example, things that can immerse you in a game. Ambient noise. The, literally the visuals themselves, the quality of the graphics. If it's, right. if it's System Shock 2 and you play it now, the graphics simply may be too antiquated for you to feel immersed. The perspective, which is huge for me. First person, third person. To me, very few third person games are immersive mm -hmm. just because you're not seeing through your own eyes. So the, to me, it's the umbrella of immersion. Any one of those things or a combination of them can immerse you in a game to varying degrees. You being immersed is a microcosm 
is, uh, it is dependent on a. It's kind of a sum of the total. Yeah, it's exactly. too, you know it, it's. Do I feel it, it's the spectrum of not at all immersed to fully immersed? Right. And I can fall anywhere along. It's there. never one thing. It's many small things. Exactly, and there are some games that do it well, and some games where you do, you it's even if it's a fantasy game, the game could be completely fictional and fantasy. If I suspend the disbelief, can I still? Can the game still make me feel as if I'm there? It's possible, yes. Right. But to me, it's it's not you and I disagree. Like for example, if I, I'm not going to say no third person game is immersive, and you say I disagree, yeah, you can have that argument. But to me, it's for myself. Third person games don't immerse me. You could feel completely differently. So I feel like it, we need to establish that. I don't think it's a a, a binary state. I think it's a, a level of degrees for immersion. Right. But the way I feel about a game like StarCraft is if someone feels as though it's immersive in the sense of, I feel like I'm the tactical commander moving my units around and controlling the macro of a battle. And even the micro, if you're, if you're into that portion of it. If that's what immerses you, that's kind of fine, but I feel like the StarCraft is not, was not built to be that. It's like people who say that every decision is a moral decision, no matter what it is. My counter-argument is, for example, if you ask me, I ask for a pen, you say what color. Me saying black or blue is not a moral, it's not a moral decision. It's an amoral decision. It, it just means one's you're going to hell and one isn't. Exactly. You're going to heaven. Exactly. That's all. It's not so a moral that, decision. That's just... how I feel. <laughs> I feel like some games that aren't trying to be immersive at all, they're kind of, and I'll, use, I'll create the word amersive, which I, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's, it's irrelevant. The level of immersion is kind of irrelevant because the game was not meant to be that. Game, like, and it's, you know, mainly, it's mainly visual and audio media that is really being this. You can't really say, oh, poker's not immersive. It's not, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Kind of the same. Right. So we don't really talk about things that are not video games outside the scope of this channel. I guess you could like dress up like your favorite pro poker guy and go out and play and like be immersed in some way. That's but like, like what you're saying, that's it's like LARPing in poker. It's, <laughs> we won't go there. It is. It's immersive. Okay, we'll check out the poker LARP. A immersive. Immersive. Is it immersive? We're we're, inventing? we're talking about immersive games okay. that are not even trying to be immersive. It's kind of immersion doesn't factor in. It's relevant. Like Tetris. Yeah, I think Tetris is immersive. Again, though, this is very subjective. So if someone feels like a game like StarCraft, you can be immersed, that's fine. Generally speaking, I just think that there are plenty of games out there. Magicka is a perfect example. I don't think it, it was at all in any way intended for you to feel as though you're in the world, you are these characters. Right. And that's perfectly fine. To me, I think we should stick to games that are clearly trying to be Right. To what extent are they? I think that's where the discussion lies. I, I think that I think that's right because when you because there are different paths to immersion and then you have to say, well, these games are actually trying to get there, whereas you know, you can come up with reasons very individually why StarCraft, oh, I just get really immersed in Star like I feel like I'm really commanding troops, but that like what you said, it's mm -hmm. not really the point. Yeah. of the game. I think, Whereas, for example, like a sub like Stealth Action, virtually every single Stealth Action game I think is trying to be immersive, with, the exception, immersive, with yeah. the exception of Stealth Bastard Deluxe. <laughs> and if you haven't seen that, check it out on Steam. Well, Stealth, That's like, really stealth first action, person though. or third person Stealth Action, it really is great for the gameplay if you feel like you really need to hide. And if you feel like you're there and that this is a very realistic moment, it's more... It's built for it. If you're sitting in your chair and you have perfect posture... And you're playing a stealth action game. It's not immersive. You need to you're be hunched over your keyboard. You, when your girlfriend sits over there on the couch and she says something to you, you go shh. <laughs> He's right there. He can hear you. Exactly. That's an immersive game. Right. I was mentioning to you that uh, um, Mirror's Edge, and even though it was a console PC, you know, you know, it did everything right in the way of. It was always in first person. You never left the first person view. There was almost zero UI. Yeah, UI was the other factor about immersion that the, st the extent to which you feel immersed, for me, heavily dependent on UI. Right. Because it could it could go either way. Like some people, um, you know, you could take, I'm sure there's factors where people just say, I just wish there was a UI element to tell me this one, one aspect. And because I don't know it, just offhand, it, I'm not immersed. I just can't get immersed. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, I've had people make arguments like that before. But to me, Mirror's Edge was so wonderful because it was just, this is how it looks when you're running through a cityscape. Yeah, if you were a tiny Asian woman trying to, well, I'm, I won't 
reveal too much about this, but <laughs> if you're a tiny Asian woman, this is what life is like. That's Mirror's Edge. <laughs> It was also a documentary as well as a sim. Yes. It was as a an action game. Yeah. <laughs> this is what these women if go you're through not, every day. If you're not athletic enough to take up parkour, yeah. it's pretty close in terms of letting you know what it's like. It feels amazing mm -hmm. running around. So that to me is like a very immersive game. So I just wanted to define this for people. When, I, when we say immersive, now this doesn't mean it has to be... We're not exploring have to this take, definition to the entire Webster's Yeah, definition. but when if you listen to this channel... And I say, oh, this is immersive. This is an immersive game. This is the, within the parameters we're talking about. That doesn't mean that any game that I this is I don't feel that any game that really grabs your attention means it's an immersive game. It just means that it is an addictive game, and that's fine too. But there's immersive and there's immersive. <laughs> Shepherd is going. Um, so I just want everyone to keep that in mind as we move forward through the discussion. Uh, we have a couple videos to post that we did before all the moving and all hard the hard drive failing, uh, hard drive the, failure, me not being in Los Angeles. -ing. Yes, one of which was a review of World War Z, the movie, because we love zombies. This is like our second thing. We don't love zombies. We love zombie stuff. We love. <laughs> we kill zombies. That's right. We love what zombies bring to the yes. table. <laughs> <laughs> and we shoot them. <laughs> yes. And yesterday when we were at the shooting range, we were very tempted to buy all the zombie targets. That's right. But we didn't. We did not. But anyway, so in the next, uh, we'll do the next series when we'll talk about um, arcade and sim specifically to try to define these camps. And then we could talk about how people fall into those camps. And if you're one of the four people who has followed us from the beginning, you may remember that we have touched upon these topics before, but for the large majority of you who have not, this is somewhat, not really a rehashing of those discussions, but it, because since then our views may have changed, mm -hmm. but also it appears to be coming up again in some of the responses we've been seeing. Right. And in games that are coming out, for example, you, we've all heard a lot of hype about The Last of Us, and just all, uh, people are saying all the wonderful things that game does, not just in terms of immersing you in the gameplay, but immersing you in the story, or for right. example, Bioshock Infinite. So I think games that are coming out now that are really trying to put you in the game, it brings it up again. So I think it's natural to talk about it. Right. Absolutely. Um, for the PC Elitist, my name is Woodsy. My name is Shepard. This is us signing out. <laughs>